Hi everyone, we are here at Data Plus AI Summit and look who I'm with me, Anshu, who is the CEO and co-founder of Skyflow. Anshu, welcome to the Ravid Show. Long due, I think we've been connected for years and finally it's good to have you here at Data Plus AI Summit uh, and I've been seeing your booth buzzing. I've been, you know, obviously waiting for uh, us to chat and I'm excited to obviously learn a lot about what's happening in the data space, in the governance, security. Uh, but just for the audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself, tell us more about Skyflow as well? Sure, so my name is Anshu Sharma, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Skyflow. Started the company about five and a half years ago. Before that, I was a product guy and an engineer at Oracle and Salesforce. I'm an investor in about 50 plus companies at this point. Some of them you might know like Razorpay in India or Workato and Nutanix here. And you know, I'm just really excited to be here talking about data and AI and security and privacy. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, thanks for that background. Uh, Anshu, I'm kind of also curious to know what are you seeing the trends in terms of uh, the governance, the security, what have you been hearing? Because I know you work with large enterprises out there uh, and they have, uh, when it comes to AI, the governance, the security piece kind of plays a very important role, the privacy kind of plays a very important role. I want to hear from you, what are the trends you're seeing? And then we'll get into more of the discussions that you're having with the enterprises. Yeah, so, you know, if you think about data and AI and apps and agents and reporting, these are all buzzwords. From my perspective, there's only two simple questions. I have some information in the company and I want to find out the answer to that. Now, in the old days, we would do that by running a report Sometimes we would do that, do that by having a forum. Yep. Sometimes, now we can do that by asking a question in English. Now, from an enterprise perspective, that's what it looks like, but from a customer's perspective, it's entirely different, right? So when you and I walk into, say, a Walmart in the US, or a Flipkart online in India, or we get insurance from a company like GoodRx yep. to get healthcare, as a consumer, you're not just buying something from these companies, in order to buy something, if you want to call an Uber or an Ola, you have to tell them where you are. Exactly. What your phone number is. Yep. Where you're traveling to. And that's true for a taxi company. Wow. That's true for a coffee company. That's true for a dating company. That's true for a commerce company. You go back 10, 15 years ago, your airline had no idea where you lived, who you were. Yep. So we are moved from a world where in order to do business with a vendor selling you 15 pounds of atta or yeah. two loaves of bread, you had to give zero information. You handed them $5 and you got your bread. But today, you want that bread delivered at home. You want your identity to be verified. Yeah. You want a beer with that, so they need to identify wage. So we have, as consumers, created an environment where we want our needs to be met in a very personalized way. The key word is personalized. The first part of personalized is person. Mm. And you can't do that level of service for customers without actually collecting person's data. Right. And that's what we right. call personally identifiable information. It's a fancy word, but it basically means if I want to give you your loaf of bread, with the right amount of grains in it, whether you're gluten sensitive or not, I need to know a lot of information about you so I can rebook your flight. And all of that runs on trust. Mm. We give our data to these companies because we trust them. Exactly. However, we wake up every morning and we read about the fact that we can no longer trust them sometimes because of data breaches. So Skyflow's mission has been, how can we make sure that when we trust companies with our person data, that that data never ends up in a data breach. Yep. If there is a data breach that's mitigated and doesn't really have your real personal information, and that's been the mission of Skyflow before AI started, and now that we have AI, that problem just gets 10 times worse. Yeah, exactly. So how are enterprises looking? First of all, thanks for all those insights, it's fantastic. But how are enterprise leaders kind of looking at something like this? Now, like you said, when AI came into the game, the data game has gone much uh, worse than what it was. Mm -hmm. So, what are you hearing from enterprise leaders? 
first of all, what are they excited about? But at the same time, they want to be super careful about the governance, the privacy of data, and how is Skyflow helping them? So, you know, this morning, we are at the Databricks conference, and Jamie Dimon was on stage, and he was talking about all the ways that a bank like Chase is adopting AI. They said they're spending something like $2 billion, and he said they don't have an AI department. Everything is getting changed by AI. And I think that's the key. Whether you're talking about, so we have a customer, for example, Visa, that helps you manage like chargeback. So you know when your Uber doesn't arrive on time or you reach a hotel and doesn't have the bed that they promised you, you dispute the charge. Now, take something like a chargeback dispute. Yep. To resolve that, you have to report that to your bank, your bank has to report to the bank of the merchant, yep. that merchant bank has to potentially go to a payment provider, Visa or MasterCard might be involved, all of them have to have access to your personal information. And now, with AI, you want AI to actually help educate that so you can get a response much faster. But that means AI now needs to be able to see what you bought, from where, what did you buy before that, where were you before that, where were you after that. So something as simple as you disputing a $15 charge because your package didn't arrive on time could lead to multiple entities sharing and working on the data associated. So what I'm seeing companies do is, they're moving very fast with AI, building these amazing prototypes right. and demos. It's very easy to build a demo where I can show you how I disputed the charge and got fixed by AI. Mm. But to take it into production, I now have to ask the hard question. Okay, does my Anthropic or OpenAI get to see the thing I bought? Does my merchant get to see everything I bought from whom I want? How much of that information is shared mm. by one model with another model? We move to multi-agent world. So what companies are struggling with is the, how do I take these demos and prototypes that work in a perfect environment when data engineers build them, right? and how do I turn them into actual customer service? Because you and I are flying every day, Mm. I have yet to rebook a flight where my agent is doing the job. Exactly. And the reason is they cannot actually deploy this stuff to their employees or to their customers till they are 100% sure that the risk of a data breach, the risk of the data falling in the wrong hands has been completely eliminated. Yeah, I think those are fantastic insights and I'm sure very detailed explanations. So thanks for that. It always helps us to understand how are enterprise leaders kind of thinking about it and uh, also what are the, the real pain points, but also how AI can solve and cannot solve as well. Mm, yeah. uh, so uh, those are fantastic ones. So a little going ahead in the time as well. How do you kind of, how do you kind of see this space evolving in say next three to six months? I'm not even gonna go to your because we all know the way at which, uh, you know, AI and data has been kind of moving. It's massive. So I'm kind of curious to hear your thoughts. Uh, what's your vision looking like? So I think where the market is clearly headed, and we saw that last week at the Snowflake conference, we saw this Databricks, Dario was on stage, Sam has been talking about this. Yeah. Everybody knows that the agents can reason. But the thing you have to remember is reason about what? Hmm. They can only reason about the data right. that you give them. Yeah or they can glean from your systems, <laughs> or they can find in your systems by calling MCP protocols. At the end of the day, somehow this AI reasoning, you know, I call them an intern, right? AI is at the level of a very smart intern, but an intern can only do the work that you ask it to do if you give them the information necessary. Mm. And so I think where everybody's evolving to is OpenAI and Tropic, they were all chatbots, which meant they basically were Wikipedia bots. Yeah, 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 right. They could answer any question about you and me that's in Wikipedia. Yeah. But they couldn't answer a question about my purchase history. Now that we are connecting those systems up to our enterprise systems, to our email, our box.com, everything else, I think we're going to see a sea change in how much data yep. is usable by these AI systems and agents. Yep. and therefore the kind of answers they can deliver to us. And I think that's going to change everything because the AI and the agents get 10x more powerful because yeah. you can actually ask a question instead of saying, hey, 
when was Skyflow started, which you can actually search in Google, yeah. you can ask a question like, hey, you know, can you find out the third most uh, successful enterprise sales salesperson at my company? Mm. One more quick question for you, um, uh, Anshu, is about uh, what does Skyflow do? Tell us more about that. Tell us more, a little bit more into how you all are helping the enterprises out there. Uh, would love to know a little bit about that too. Sure, so Skyflow is a very simple idea. We call it a PII, data privacy vault. Yep. We do two things, data privacy and AI security. Yep. And what that means is when you as a person walk up to a bank or a retailer or a online cab, hmm. when you give them your information, it doesn't move around from department to department and database to database in plain text. It can gets converted into what we call polymorphic tokens. Yep. These are tokenized values so that your Databricks, your Snowflake, your Box.com, your Salesforce, your ServiceNow is not acting on Ravid Chen with his real other ID or social security number. Oh, nice. But is working on tokenized values. And then based on the rules that you've set up, if you're work working customer way. service in Indonesia, maybe you see only the last four digits of my number. Oh, that's very cool. If yeah. I'm based in India and I am your relative, maybe I can see the account balance, but I can't see any of your personal information. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I'm a fraud department that's checking for fraud so I can see everything, but how many frauds do I cover in a day? Maybe seven. So mm. maybe I'm limited to 20. So we are able to apply this idea of a PII token vault to the data that's going into your databases, to your data lakes, and to your Gen AI systems in a manner so that it can be always secure. So in the event that there's a breach, there's always a breach. Your news headline says, XYZ company had a massive data breach, mm -hmm. but no social security numbers, phone oh, numbers, wow. and email addresses were. Leaked. Leaked. As opposed nice. to the opposite. Nice. That is huge and I'm pretty sure that's one of the reasons why enterprises love to work with Skyflow. So great work on that. Uh, one last question for you is about if folks want to reach you, follow Skyflow, which is the best place? Well, our name is skyflow.com. <laughs> it's very easy to find. Yeah. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Anshu blog. Uh, a lot of our executives are on LinkedIn. Okay, awesome. So I would say LinkedIn, Twitter, and the website is the easiest way. You can also call us. Okay, fantastic. Uh, this is great, Anshu. Uh, thanks for sharing all the great insights. Have a fantastic conference ahead. Such a pleasure chatting with you, and we'll keep the conversation going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. All right.